So this poster was created in Adobe Illustrator and you can learn exactly how to make it for yourself in under five minutes. But do follow along carefully because you don't want to miss a trick. Firstly, we need to click onto a tool that I don't think I've ever used in the seven years that Satori Graphics has been on YouTube. So ladies and gentlemen, here is the twirl tool. Click this tool so it's at the front of its group and then double click it to access the panel. Now these adjustments will depend on your design and it will take some trial and error or experimentation to get things right. But we need to now grab the ellipse tool which is L on your keyboard and that's L for Lima. Hold down shift and click and drag to make a circle just like this. The trick for this part of the design to work well is to choose a base colour for your design. So for me it's that kind of teal turquoise sort of colour. We then want to hold down the alt option key and click and drag to duplicate the circle. Make sure to bring it so the central points of the circle overlap with the edges. For the second circle, choose a similar colour to the first one but a darker shade of that base colour. Then select them both and duplicate once more and press command or control D for delta to end up with a long line of circles. We then want to repeat the process to duplicate that line multiple times below. But you might be thinking, where am I going with this? Well, we now need to bring that twirl tool into the mix. However, select everything beforehand. You can either hold down a click like this or even just click multiple different times. It will take some trial and error like I said before and this isn't an ideal turnout for me to be honest right here. But once you do have something that looks swirly, you might have noticed some glaringly obvious gaps on the design. To rectify this, just sample the lighter colour on your design using the eyedropper tool and then make a rectangle using that colour and send it to the back of all objects. Finally for this step, select everything and expand the appearance. So we need to make another rectangle but this time it's going to act as a mask. So place it over a section that you do like the look of and select everything once more and create a clipping mask. And don't you just love how the edges are so nice and neat now? Or is that just me? Anyway, we want to turn this into a symbol so let's hop into the symbols panel, drop this design in and give it a name. The next part of this tutorial might be a bit tricky, mainly because the 3D side of Adobe Illustrator is still a bit janky. It's not quite finished in my opinion, but I've got a workaround and we can still work with it. For the effect that I want to apply, it seems impossible to do that with entire groups of text. So I've actually had to split up my design into three sections as you can see here. But first, let's go ahead and outline the text. So I'm going to show you my process for the S and the O here. We need to head into the 3D materials panel which is found in the latest update of Illustrator. We're going to use the inflate option and I do personally like to use the isometric top layout for this kind of design. Give your design some depth and how much is entirely up to you of course. But for my design I want each of the three letter groups to be the same depth. So I'm just going to use a round number like 400 that's easy to type in. Right, so in the materials menu locate the graphics option and then just click your symbol once. So as you can see it seems that it only covers a part of the design. You can adjust this with the circle here but it never seems to cover everything. So the workaround is to bring another graphic layer onto your shape and then just arrange it so it covers the entirety of your design. Yes, it can be fiddly and it is a tad annoying, but let's just hope that Adobe makes this easier in the next update. But after you've done that, expand the design and repeat it for the other letters that you might have. So on my poster, I started with a typography like so and then I went for a very bold contrasting background, in this case purple. And to create some interest and intrigue with further contrast, I have some partially hidden lettering behind the main design in white. And then some neat typography to finish the thing off. Now, I do quite like this a lot and it's not that difficult to make either. And if you want to try this for yourself, do tag me on Twitter or even post it in my Discord group, which is free by the way. And if you want to use the fonts that I've used today, head over to the link in the description box below. And until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.